the creative people in the room? There isn't anybody creative. Oh, two, two creative people over here. I love you guys. Where are the innovators? Are there any innovators? Anybody who wants to discover something? Anybody wants to build something that's different than has been done before? Okay. For the next 45 minutes, I'd like you all to believe that you are innovative, that you're capable of doing something different. Can you do that for me? Because we are substantially who we think we are. We are who we think we are in substantial part. You should have a worksheet that looks something like this. If you don't, raise your hand so the folks can get these to you. While that's happening, maybe we can have a conversation. What is innovation? Give me a definition, somebody. What is innovation? Yes. Something new or something that is being hand? Enhanced. Like you are really close to the dictionary definition. It's the mask thing. New or an enhanced version of something that is existing. Why does it matter? Why on earth does innovation matter? Why don't we just keep doing the same thing we've always done? Anybody? Why, why does it matter? Yes? Just keep be boring and what? Yeah, keep the same thing over and over again. There's a human thing about wanting something different. What do we say to each other? What's new? What's new? What's happening? What we mean is what's changed since the last time we talked. It's a human thing. We want novelty. But there's a bigger reason. Customers. In business, Customers matter. No, could you handle these up for me, please? Could you bring those up to me? Thank you. Oops, you can keep that one. It's my gift to you. Customers matter. What do customers care about? What do, what do, what do customers really want? to have happen? Anybody? Yes. What do customers care about? A product that will make their everyday life easier. Yeah. Make it easier. Customers are looking for solutions to problems. They're looking for their, a lower frustration level. Can't get this thing to work. Why doesn't it? Somebody make something that makes this thing work. And in return, they're willing to give you money or time, something precious to them, so that you solve that problem for them. Customers care about their frustrations being solved, that their frustration is brought to an end, reduced level of tension and pressure and problems. That's what customers care about. And that's why you, as an entrepreneur, as an innovative person that we've previously agreed you're going to be for at least 45 minutes, need to think about them, pay attention to them. In for about 400 years, this was the way in which information was translated, what was put down. This is called an illuminated manuscript. 
How long do you think it took somebody to make one of these? It, by the way, it's sheepskin. You have to kill the sheep first and scrape its skin and stretch it and so forth. And only then do you get to start writing. How long do you think it might take somebody? Yes. Months. Yes. In about 1400, it took two people four years to make 350 pages about the size of a standard paperback. So that's eight man years, or person years, to make one book. So, around 1400, all of the previous information that had existed in the world was being doubled in 400 years. It took 400 years to double the amount of information that existed. Let's fast forward to 1900. How long do you think it then took to double the amount of information? Any guesses? Sorry? Days? No? About 100 years. 1950. How long is the doubling of information take? Guesses. This is a dialogue, not a lecture. Weeks, yes. 1950 is about 52 weeks, a year, in other words. Okay. 19, sorry, 2017, four years ago, information was doubling at the rate of two years. I've, all the information we've ever existed doubled every two years. Guesses and a thousand extra points to someone who can guess how fast information is doubling today according to IBM. Seconds? You're just a little too much for me. No, 12 hours. It doubles twice a day. It's exponential. So, do, do customers' circumstances change as a result of that doubling information? Not necessarily, right? Just because we have more stuff, we have more likes, we have more data pieces, doesn't necessarily mean that customers' situations are changing faster. Data and knowledge are not necessarily related. We'd like to think they are, but they're not. The what doesn't necessarily uh, drive the so what. Check out this graph. Can you guys see this graph over here? You understand that? See what you're looking at? So on the, uh, along the bottom are dates. You've got 1900 to 2020 along the bottom. And on the left hand, uh, the, the vertical axis, is a percentage of the population that a uh, device has penetrated. So, for example, the landline on the far left here went up to about 40% of the population being used uh, by the Second World War. 19, sorry, no, uh, that's the Depression. 1925. Then lost, like 5-10% of its of its usage, and then started to gain again. It didn't reach 80% until 1960, so about 55 years to get to 80% of the population. That's a pause. That's a, a meaningful pause. Because over here, what are we seeing? We're seeing smartphone usage, tablets, social media, cellular phones, the internet. What do you notice about the the, the graph uh, the lines on the right-hand side compared to the left. They're more vertical. They're hard. Normally, there's an adoption curve called an S-curve. It's slow at the beginning. Not many people know about it. Then it really takes off. And for the last penetration, it slows again. Most of the old technology on the left-hand side is demonstrating that capability. On the right-hand side, there ain't no curve. It's a rocket. It's, devices are changing our world faster than ever before. 
So what does that mean about customers' needs? What, 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 are, we, what are we thinking about what customers' circumstances are uh, being affected by this kind of, of penetration or behavior, technology? Yes. They want something more advanced. Would you, would you agree with me that their, that their world is changing? Would you, so if I'm, uh, I've got a, say the internet, okay? My world has been changed fundamentally by the internet. So my problems, my frustrations are changing faster than they have ever been changed before in human history. Anybody want to argue with me on that? Because that's a key point. We are finding different circumstances every day. And technology is the biggest driver of change. So, change, and I, it really does mean survival in the business world. It really does. Think about relevance. When we say something is irrelevant to the question, we have the issue, and then we have stuff over here that's simply not relevant. And that's what businesses can become, irrelevant. They just, they're fine, they're wonderful people. The technology is great, but it doesn't connect to our needs. It's not relevant. So change equals survival. Survival for us as functioning humans in our society, we must become familiar with a mobile device. We've got to learn how to use the internet. We've got to adapt. And businesses must change constantly. If the organization that you're a part of is not already thinking about how to make itself obsolete, how to make itself obsolete, then somebody else is likely to do it for you. Reinvention, constant reinvention is necessary. What's this? A dot, a period. A circle, a black circle. Now, if I say, if I, if I phrase that question differently and say, what could it be? It's a fundamental shift in the way I'm phrasing the question and a fundamental, I hope, way that you think about what this is. Well, there's no screen there. It's over there. What could it be? A dot? <laughs> it's still a dot, right? <laughs> what else? What could it be? An eyeball. A pipe. Bottom of a pole. Bottom of a hole. Is there? An always an animated character. You see how that just went crazy? For, from, you thought I was asking for a literal answer. By the time you graduate high school, you, high school, you live, gone through about 1,400 tests. Almost all of them will have had a right or wrong answer. And so when somebody stands up like me at the front and says, what is this? You're in answer mode, not creative mode. So to flip that question on yourself when you are asking yourself questions leads to different answers because you're conditioned right now. If a woman did this, she took this to a, a set of elementary schools, and they were all over the map. It's the top of a, a phone pole. Right off the bat, they were just sparking, right? Let's bring that five-year-old mind back when you step into the innovative world. Why do you think this, I keep pointing over there. Why do you think this screen is orange? It's different than the rest. It's the biggest takeaway on this. If, you've, if you remember nothing else from what I'm saying today, please remember this, that creativity is not inborn. It is not something that's only practiced by people who knit their own sweaters and make things out of tongue depressors. It's not. It is a way of thinking. It can be taught. It can be learned. Because the fundamental thing is looking at the problem differently. Differently than you've done before, differently than the people next to you, 
they, allowing yourself, allowing yourself to think differently is the key to innovation, creativity, discovery, and invention. Allowing yourself to think differently. So when you think of this again, then the world can change. What we're going to do right now is look at four ways to think differently. So you can practice these in your own life, in your own world. We're going to have a lemonade stand. We all have a lemonade stand. This is, this is something we're all a part of. We've got, we've got uh, equity in this, in this, and we've got a problem. We've got 10 truckloads of, melon, of, of lemons. And they're just like this. We've got loads. We've got tons of extra lemons. What are we going to do with them? We've got a problem. Yes. No. What would aliens do? Aliens float six inches off the ground. They don't know our world. They don't have all the preconceptions and, and hurdles that we put in front of ourselves. So one way of helping ourselves to think differently is to imagine what aliens would do. So what might aliens do? Eat them. <laughs> That's one answer. Use them as weapons. Use them as an energy source. As, I can't pull my sound. Oil. You squeeze them because there's oil in here, right? Yes. So here's something that's not on your worksheets. It's the secret device to thinking differently. Break down, break it down. Put something on your worksheet that says break it down. Because let's think about what's in here. As somebody once said already, they said, eat them. They said, use them as fuel, right? So break it down. So what's in here? What, what is this composed of? It's about the size of a baseball? Juice. It, 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 what kind of juice? It's a citric acid, right? So it's, it's an acid in here. We can use the acid. What else can we use? It, it, what was that? Seeds, yeah, the seeds, we could use those. It, it, it is textured, it is, we could use them as a football for very small people. Yes. Just pull your mask down very quickly. Yes, use the peel for decomposition. It's textured, it's all kinds of usage. Break it down. Say we have a, a warehouse full of ball bearings. Well. The ball bearings, we're not, we're not making those anymore, so what could we use them for? So we could use them as all kinds of things. They're heavy, there's many of them. We could make street furniture out of them in wire mesh bags, like bean bags. Nobody's gonna steal them because they can't lift them. If you break something down to its elements, then it allows you to think differently rather than thinking it's a lemon, therefore I've gotta use it as lemonade. So break it down is one key thing. Come at it differently, so frequently, so frequently. We say the answer is obvious. It's obvious. What are we even thinking about this for? But that blinds us to all of the other possibilities around us, around it. There's all kinds of other possibilities, but we go for the first one. Give me an object, a name of an object. An object? Louder. Paper. I want something related to paper. Trees. All right. Let's use the, a tree to jump us outside of the obvious answer. And how does trees help us? Oops. So there's no traffic on the street. How do I, trees help us think about this differently? How do trees, answer, uh, how do trees connect to our problem with by the way, the problem on this one is no traffic on the street. What, what, how might trees help us solve that problem? Yes. <laughs> Plant trees in the road. Yes. That'll stop the traffic and, and get you going to your uh, lemonade stand. What else? 
what on top of the road? Logs? Yeah. Chop the trees, fall in the road, traffic stops, we get more customers. Sounds like an ambush. Sounds like a terrorist incident. I love it. Anything else? You get the idea? If you, if you just chan randomly choose a thing, a thing related to that thing gets you even further away from the problem and then come back. The answer won't be as obvious. Which team is likely to win? A team selected from 20 players or a, a team selected from 200 players? 100 players, right? Why? Because you get a better chance to... I'm sorry, I can't. It's the mask thing. Yes. You have more choices. You think of better ideas. So why on earth do we go with our first idea? Why do we only think up three ideas and then go with the, the, the best one? Why do you think we do that? You got all the answers today. Yeah, we want a quick answer. We want to do it and get on to something else. But it's with the seventh, the ninth, the twelfth, the sixteenth idea that will be the better one. So one way to do that is to fold a piece of paper. It doesn't quite show up there, but that's folded three times one way and three times the other way. It gives you nine spaces. We're not going to be able to do this today, but I strongly recommend that you think about this as a way of developing your ideas. Because if you start on the top left, you set a timer for five minutes, and it Every square needs to be filled in five minutes with different ideas. It forces you not to elaborate and work on this t one until it's overly ornate and probably not connected to what it is you're trying to do. It, time forces you to move forwards. By the way, it also helps you really get better. Say you say, uh, lemonade stand on the top left, and then you say, lemonade stand at uh, is franchised, and then the next one is let me say is franchised through Florida, and so you're elaborating on it until you start to get something that's worthwhile. So, if we if more ideas are better, what might we do with our lemonade stand if we have no people to help? We can't get people to help. What what kind of uh, solutions might we have? Yes. Advertise for more volunteers. What else? Have robots do the job for you. What else? Over here. Smaller quantities. Reduce the amount of size, right? So, yeah, I think I understand. What else? Scream, scream let me help me with my lemonade stand. How, how else might we uh, help our business if we don't have enough help, enough, enough people to help? What do you think? Hire people. Or what about um, sending it to them? Think, so, so you're breaking away just from the people problem to thinking about the source of that problem. Oh, look at root causes. There's something in the lean world that's the five whys. And they say, why don't you have enough people? Why don't, and then you answer, because I don't have any friends. So why don't you have any friends? So you, then you go looking back at the root cause. Okay? Five whys is another solution, uh, a discovery technique. Encourage craziness is the fourth technique. Encourage craziness. This is what we know in the bottom left-hand side. That's what we know. That's who we think we are. That's the present time, the present world. The truly crazy idea is up on the top right. So if this was automobiles, bottom left would be the internal combustion engine, the four-cylinder vehicles that we drive all the time. Top right is a jetpack in every garage. By the way, that's been 
discussed for at least 60 years. Still isn't here. And I've checked my garage this morning, nothing there. This is the idea that will change the world. This is Tesla. This is an electric vehicle. We've brought down the idea of, hey, what if, what if it was less in, uh, dependence on the internal combustion engine? What's the, what's the engine of tomorrow? And we deliver an electric car. So let's apply this to our world. We've got too many customers. What are really crazy ideas for that? Can I hear? Throw lemons at them. <laughs> I'm going to go back. Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Well, we're going to forget that one. Back there. What are you guys thinking? What, is the, what are the really crazy ideas? This is Newport? No. Which high school are you? Okay, so what does Newport think about too many customers? Really crazy idea. I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. All right, so Lewisburg, what do you guys think? Hold the family hostage. Okay, what are you guys back there? Really crazy ideas, we've got too many customers. Interestingly, none of you have talked about increasing supply. We've got too much demand, but nobody's talking about increasing supply. Yes. I can't hear you. Just pull your mask down quickly. One more time. Yeah? Big water tanks? Yeah, there you go. Let's make some more. By the way, we've got, two, we've got 10 trucks of lemons, remember. We can use those. Yes. A delivery service. Okay. The only value, the only value of your first idea is as a stepping stone to the next one. There are very few circumstances in which you should settle for your first idea. Almost never. Because the, um, uh, your first idea is probably the obvious one, probably the easy one, probably the one that's not going to do anything that breaks the convention. You've got to push it. You're not going to go for the rocket pack immediately. Right? So push that idea. In summary, don't start with yourself. Why shouldn't we start with ourselves? Because you're not the customer. You're, you're almost certainly not the customer. Look at the world out there. There's so many problems, so many diverse problems that need to be solved. Don't start with yourself. Start looking at the problems in the world. The bigger the problem, the more people being helped, the more successful you will be. That makes sense? The more successful you will be because you're tackling big problems that affect a lot of people. And that's hard uh, with a lemonade stand. But just doing something that satisfies your own needs is also not going to work. Faster change means innovation will be more necessary in the future than it was in the past. And creativity is learnable. This book, Whack on the Side of the Head, is a wonderful resource. It is an easy read. They've been publishing it for 30 years. A Whack on the Side of the Head. Why would it be called a Whack on the Side of the Head? Anybody want to guess that one? Go on, guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. It's because it, a whack on the side of the head would jolt your thinking. We need to be jolted sometimes out of our conventional ways. Simone Biles. Did she do this easily? 
How, how many hours do you think, on average, the people who attended the 2012 Olympics, how many hours do you think they put into their craft to get to the Olympics? How many hours? Too many? <laughs> 10,000 is the answer. 10,000 hours, okay? So that's, that's four hours a day, every working day, five days a week, for 12 years, I believe the math was. Another one, uh, Simone herself said that she spends 32 hours a week, and that's as a teenager when she was also going to school. So, I think if I spent 10,000 hours, I could probably do a somersault, I could do something. And you can too. It's not about being creative. Remember how few of you put your hands up at the beginning as to which you, how you thought you were creative or not? Remember that? Very few of you. But if you put 10,000 hours in to anything, anything, you're going to be pretty good. I don't care whether you're a, a, a genius. You're going to be pretty good. Sheer hard work and stick to itiveness will get you a long way. And you can apply that to invention, to innovation, to creativity, if you choose to do so. We tend to get what we measure. If the Dow Jones was instead the innovation index, the innovation index today went up 10 points. We don't measure it. We don't. We just put people like Elon Musk on a pedestal and say they're almost saints. But yet we don't think about how to help each other get to that point. We think it's a gift. We think these, these people are somehow extraordinary. They're not. They've worked hard, just like Simone Biles. So, in summary, please think of yourselves creatively, innovatively. Please solve these problems that we're facing. We need you to think differently than we have in the past. Thank you for your time.